as I said in the talk, uh, putting uh, turbines as close as, say, 1,500 feet roughly or, or a little longer for safety reasons to guard against blade throw and ice throw and uh, blade, blade failure, like collapsing of the tower. Those protect from physical harm, but they don't protect from these other issues that I've talked about, including sleep disturbance, headache. I don't know if I mentioned tinnitus, but the woman who testified here mentioned she had ringing in the ears, pulsations of queasiness, uh, vibratory feeling that your body is quivering. Uh, Nina Pierpont talked about those specific uh, uh, kinds of symptoms, and so it's it's a a very bad thing to, to, to do to somebody. As I said to a person here earlier, noise crosses property lines. And there's a lot of community dissension when these things come in. People who lease their lands have to be concerned more than they are now with what, it, how, what it's going to do to affect their neighbors. So that's all I would say. Anyway. What would you advise the uh, town board to do? You know, they, they don't know about this. They're very heavy. Where should they start? Well, you need to make your board members aware of these issues. I mean, a lot of times board members, you might find out, you might learn that some of them have conflicts of interest, for example. You need to... to discover those if they exist and make that known to the community because they need to abstain from any decisions on wind turbines. If they are independent, don't have any biases of that sort, any conflicts of interest, then you need to inform them, somehow educate them. Uh, many times they're clo they have very closed minds about these things. We and think that was probably it's, a it's, it's very appealing to be ecologically minded in, in the sense that you, know, you want more turbines, uh, and this is going to help you know, with the energy crisis. It's more easy to, to go with that group of people, including wind energy people, companies, than it is to talk about these issues we've talked about today. Within 1,500 feet of the Absolutely not. I mean, we talked about one and a half, 1.25 miles as being kind of minimal. Now, people are going a mile and a half or greater. Uh, even with the very uh, unrestrictive uh, regulations we have in Michigan, unfortunately, uh, in terms of noise levels, uh, some communities have opted, I believe, for 35 decibels. And I forget the exact distances, but a mile and a half or so is has been adopted in a couple of townships there. So, yeah, it's too, too, too close. It's going to cause problems. They're going to be 500 feet tall, and uh, they're going to be uh, 1,400 feet from 34 homes. Do you think that's a wise decision? To put, uh, 30, uh, well, it's too close. The, at one of my, my last slide, I think, I'm not was showing that the impact of the neighbor at roughly 1,400 feet in, in Thelma from a 1.65 megawatt turbine. How, how many what rating are these? Uh, uh, they're 3.2 uh, three, three point point two uh, megawatts. megawatts. Okay. So, uh, th no, that's too close. That's too close. Uh, the, the general finding that I've seen worldwide is going to be at least two kilometers away. Neighbor reports in Wisconsin and Colorado say they need to gain relief from the motion sickness type impacts at about four miles away. I've measured the, the pulsations from wind turbines at 32 miles. So the four miles doesn't necessarily surprise me. Especially combined with my experience in Falmouth at 1400 feet, I got very sick. It took a while to recover. I lost sight of one eye for a time uh, after that survey. It took weeks to recover. So, I, no, I've, in my direct experience, that, that's far too close. And distance is the only reliable noise control option. Uh, 50 dB is, is uh, you've seen my graphs. You've seen Jerry's graphs. The WHO, ANSI, uh, are in agreement 
Paul Schomer, the Hesslers, Rand, Ambrose, Rick James, um, and, uh, and a number of other uh, acousticians all talk about you're in a quiet rural area, you're talking about criteria for sight sighting for average levels in the mid-30s. Maybe some of us are a little lower than that, some of us are a little higher, but we're not up in the 40s, we're not up at 50. Right? It just, it, if you're in an urban area, an industrial area, a commercial area, 50 can work at night, but not in a quiet rural area. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't fit our professional experience to prevent complaints. Okay.